Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 through 11. The angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. This is the first time a character known as the angel of the Lord shows up in scripture. And scholars debate the identity of the angel of the Lord. And in some cases, it appears to be a messenger from God. But in other cases, the angel of the Lord appears to be somehow God himself. In this case, the angel of the Lord says, I will surely multiply your offspring. And so in this instance, the angel of the Lord is in some way God himself. And many scholars believe this is the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ representing God as he speaks to Hagar in the wilderness. This is the first time the angel of the Lord shows up in scripture. The angel of the Lord did not appear to Noah and did not appear to Abram. The angel of the Lord coming to this woman in the wilderness tells us of God's compassion for the outcasts and for the lonely and for the afflicted. Indeed, he says, you're going to call your boy Ishmael. And the name Ishmael means God hears. We need to always remember that our God is a God of compassion. He is a God who is on the side of the downtrodden and the outcast those who have been treated unjustly, those who have been abused by their masters. Our God serves the lowliest of the low, and Jesus Christ himself came as a servant. He took the form of a servant, and he did not come as a conquering hero, not the first time anyway. But here we have the angel of the Lord appearing to Hagar, who is in deep, deep distress because of the experience that she has had at the hands of Sarai and Abram, who's not really behaved well in this whole episode. And the angel tells her to return to Sarai and submit. Now, submitting to people who haven't treated us well is one of the hardest things that we have to do. The angel is not telling her to give in to abuse, but he is saying that you need to submit and honor your role as the servant and raise this child, and I will greatly multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And what we see here is the promise of God to Hagar. We know that Ishmael becomes the father of all the Arabic peoples in the world. And we have to be very careful here because we know that Isaac, the son of Abraham and Sarah, is the child of the promise and that Ishmael is not. But that does not mean that God does not care for Ishmael or for his offspring. The children of the promise, the chosen people of God, were chosen not because they were special, but because God chose them to represent him to the world so that the world might turn to him. God's purpose is for every people under heaven, every group, every ethnic group and nationality would come and be a part of the family of God. And indeed, that's part of the beautiful, beautiful picture that John has in his vision in Revelation in the seventh chapter of that book. He says this beginning at the ninth verse. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, 
salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. God's purpose is to draw a people to himself from every corner of the globe. No one is excluded from the offer of God's love and grace, which is extended to all the world in Jesus Christ. So we should always be humble if we know already that God has elected us to be shaped into the image of Christ. And as the Heidelberg Catechism puts it, we can have a good hope for all. And we should be in prayer for those who do not yet know God, even those who think of themselves as God's enemies. Because God has a way of turning hearts <clears throat> that surprises everyone. And so our goal ought to always be in prayer for those whom we know of who are not yet connected to God, who have not yet discovered their thirst for God. Ishmael represents the peoples of the world who are not the chosen people, and yet they are people who are beloved by God. And we have to trust that God knows what he is doing. And we have to love people as God loved people, sending Jesus Christ to die, not just for one group, but for all. God is a God of compassion. And here God himself visits Hagar in the wilderness to comfort her and to make a promise to her that her own child shall be the father of a great nation. God's love extends to everyone on earth. And the good news is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God's blessings be upon you this day.